In this video, I'm going to make a couple of adjustable slits for a spectroscope and monochromator. And I have to say that I haven't done this before. I don't even know if this is going to work. But stay tuned and we'll find out. To start with, uh, I used a short piece of chrome plumbing pipe. Uh, it's an inch and a half. And I used 3 8 inch thick maple plywood. Uh, this is from some old flooring from years ago. I don't know if you could still get it, but anyway, that's what I used. I have a hole cutter that was the same diameter as my brass tubing. So I drilled in the center of my plywood almost through, except for about an eighth of an inch. And then my tubing fit into that. Then I took the JB weld and filled the groove of the hole cutter. And I pushed my brass tubing into it and then I cleaned up the excess glue. To make clearance for the light coming through the slit, I drilled a series of holes and I took a jigsaw and connected all the holes and then cleaned it up with a couple of files. Note that the slit has to be perpendicular to the direction of travel and you can see the one above I made it parallel so nobody's perfect. So I just made another one. All right, my next step is to make the slits. And on eBay, I got some one by 12 inch brass, uh, 34 thousandths thick. It's, it's fairly stiff and it's pretty flat too. I checked, checked uh, pieces I cut. These are two inch long pieces and they're pretty flat. The edges are straight too, but they're rough. Uh, so I need to make those into the uh, slit edge. And to do that, I'm going to take a file and hold it at about 45 degrees. And on one edge of each piece, I'm going to file a bevel on each side and do it evenly. Um, this will take a while to do, but eventually it'll come down almost to a to a sharp edge, but not quite. I'm going to stop just short of a, of a sharp edge, and yeah, it'll, it'll take a while. Um, and then after I get them all to that point, um, I'm going to uh, true up the edge. Uh, but that would be the next step. And once I'll, I get all the edges beveled and filed down, um, you want to uh, get a piece of uh, flat glass and that's been ground with 40 micron. This is right out of Texaro, page 69. And just take your your uh, slit and then just hold it perpendicular and just go back and forth on the on the ground glass and then with a magnifier look at it and, and um, make sure there's no no gaps in it I can't really feel it with my fingernail, but um, it's probably still some there. So it only takes a few minutes to do this. You know, want to look at it with a magnifier. You can also take a, an old piece of uh, front surface mirror and check it against um, a bright light and see if you see any light coming through it and see if it sets flat against the flat. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do all the, all the rest of these and go on to the next step. The next step is to mount the slits on a piece of stainless steel rod. 
This is a three millimeter stainless steel rod on eBay. It was only like three dollars. Um, I, I cut uh, two pieces. I think they measure uh, 2.16 inches. And the tricky part is that um, these have to be glued on um, onto the slits with very little glue, um, except uh, where it actually contacts. But first, I, I took these um, pieces of rod and I stuck them in my drill press and polished them with fine sandpaper. I also took a file and while it was spinning, uh, rounded uh, one end, uh, rounded and like a half round, and the other end is flat as I can get, but it always comes out a little bit uh, slightly rounded, which is okay. Um, and then um, the tricky part was to glue them onto the slit um, and not get very much glue onto to it. And I uh, noticed that I have two tabs of tape on here that space it out. And I'm using um, 3M Teflon tape. Uh, it's pretty thick. It's like uh, 11 thousandths thick to act as a spacer. And that's so that when the slits come together, they're not, r the, the other slit's not writing on the, the stainless steel rod. So I put two tabs of tape on here, and then a little bead of, I used um, uh, epoxy, and um, I used this paper clip just to hold it in place. And um, it takes uh, four to six hours for this slow cure uh, epoxy to set. And during that time, I took a Q-tip and wiped as much of the glue um, out of uh, uh, out of the seam as I could get on on both sides. And before it before it actually sets, <clears throat> you know, it gets stiffer and stiffer. Um, you can you can uh, take a Q-tip and, and clean it off. Because you want to have um, more than um, half of this rod without any glue on it, because this is going to become the ways of the slide. So um, when I'm finally done, I could take this Teflon tape and just pull it out, like so. And check and make sure there's no glue. Um, anywhere uh, except on the very bottom. Maybe clean it up a little bit with acetone. So I uh, noticed also that I'm, uh, I, I glued it uh, pretty close to this edge here. Um, I'm, I'm making a left and a right version. This, this is going to sit on here uh, and the screw is going to be over here to push it back and forth with a spring over here. The next thing I did is took a strip of Teflon, filed it three millimeters thick, or just under three millimeters, and uh, along one edge I filed a, a 30 degree angle on it, and th this will be the ways for my slide. And then this is enough pieces for four. So I uh, drilled and countersunk a hole for a, a nail brad. It's only about 45 thousandths uh, wide. And that's going to hold my uh, strips down. All right, here's where I've gotten on my slits. Um, I've got the slide working. And the, uh, we'll have a screw on here that pushes it back and forth. So um, here's one I've taken apart. Um, one, uh, one thing that I found that I did wrong whenever I glued the slit onto the rod 
was I pushed the pushed the brass past the um, rod, extended past the rod, and when my when I had to, I found that I had my spring hit the brass instead of hitting the rod. So to fix it, I had to take a file and file at an angle. Be careful that I didn't hit the um, the, the rod uh, so that my uh, spring would um, hit the rod and not the brass. So the one mistake I did. Um, so uh, what I did, I, I took and mounted my uh, angled Teflon pieces on here. They're five millimeters from either edge. So that's for travel. Uh, I attached them with uh, wire brads, and uh, the you know the, these were countersunk. So um, I took a, uh, a a punch and uh, hammered them below the surface so that it holds the part tight and it's. Uh, doesn't extend, it can't extend up above the surface. This one down here is a little bit thicker, it's 3.022 uh, and it's also, um, I had to use a punch and punch it down and um, that that's so that the, uh, the slit will be uh, parallel to the surface. Also, um, I've got on here uh, two pieces of my 11 thousandths thick uh, Teflon tape that the rod will sit on and that's uh, like so and also note that on the back side I got a, a six millimeter by one millimeter thick uh, rare earth magnet and a little piece of steel so that uh, the uh, slit will always be pulled down against the, the Teflon. So I had to make um, I had to make springs. I, I used um, eight thousand thick hardened stainless steel shim stock. You can get it from McMaster's, and I had to I had to cut out a shape like this. And it um, it pushes the rod up against the, the Teflon and traps it. Notice that I've got a piece of uh, two two pieces of my uh, eleven thousandths Teflon tape on here, so that uh, the rod will only touch uh, Teflon. And on the end. I made a little spring that uh, pushes the rod back towards the screw. So, and there, and I used uh, finish washers to give a, a wide area of uh, support. I'll have to um, make a mount to hold my screws. For my screw, I'm using a 440 by one inch. Uh, screw stainless steel screw and maybe a little wooden knob um, it's gonna it's gonna push the slit to adjust the opening but you can't use it as it comes because the ends are uh, end has to be nice and flush and they're not out of the box so what you do is take a piece of scrap wood Drill, uh, drill press, drill perpendicular, and uh, th thread it, and then thread it into your this piece of wood so it extends up just slightly. Then take a very fine file and just file file the ends as it's sti sticking out, and, and this will keep it nice and parallel. And a fine file will give you a nice finish. So, it doesn't take very long to do. So, the end, is, end needs to be nice and square and flat. 
Okay, so here's my finished sluts. I last things I had to do was put a block in here to hold a screw. It's a piece of my maple hardwood uh, drilled out and tapped. Um, then I had to mount the the other slit next to my moving slit, and I'm using a couple of stronger neodymium magnets, and they're they're held down um, with these these spacers. Uh, spacers made out of a piece of steel from a bra hardwood a hardware uh, store bracket, uh, a piece of ultra strength um, 3M double-sided tape holding it down and then I glued on a piece of um, polyurethane foam. Before I glued it down I measured the thickness to make sure that it's equal to or less than the uh, the height underneath this slit so that when it goes on it's at least equal to or less than thickness because you want to make sure that the two edges um, are the same height and in fact uh, they were a little bit under so I added two pieces of tape to bring them up to the right height and nice thing about this you can adjust the parallelism you can take it off easy to, get, to clean it um, I think I think I'll like it I could have just screwed them down with screws but um, uh, I think this works out better. You can adjust the parallelism and see my slit works very well. I would have had to pay uh, well over $500 for a set of these if I had to buy them. And I don't think I had $10 in the whole thing. <laughs>